Money is easy to get. Money is supposed to come to you. So if it keeps moving away from you, it is telling you something. You can't manage. I'm serious about this. Let me show you some scriptures here. Because God does not encourage waste. And that's God's problem with most of us. We don't manage. We waste things. Uh, I put it to you this way. The reason why God created tithing. Tithing has nothing to do with giving God money. Can I say it again? Yes. Just for the CD purpose. <laughs> tithing has nothing to do with giving God money. God doesn't need nothing from you. You couldn't even give God nothing. Everything on the earth already belongs to God. He don't need nothing from us. So when God sets something up, it's not because he needs it. Tithing and offerings is God's management training program for mankind. Boy, this is so important. God doesn't need a penny from us. And yet he tells us 10% of everything is mine. We only think of money. And that's our problem. If you get 10 pairs of shoes, one of them ain't yours. If you get 10 dresses, one of them ain't yours. If you bought 10 oranges, one of them is not yours. If you got 24 hours in a day, 2 hours and 40 minutes don't belong to you. I got no time to pray. What are you talking about? You got 2 and a half hours and 40 minutes that don't belong to you. You're a thief every day when you don't use those two hours and 40 minutes for God's purposes. Amen. You are a thief. A tired thief. <laughs> Sleeping on God's time. You spend two hours, four hours, eight hours watching cable television and don't give God the two hours and 40 minutes that belong to him. 10%. You can't even manage two hours and 40 minutes. You're trying to get money. It ain't money, money in your problem. Management is your problem. God could any time of day command you to give the dress away in your closet. One of them ain't yours. <laughs> so tithing and offering is not about money. It's about management. Can you consistently, God says, put aside 10% of everything for my purposes? That's tithing. Can you consistently? Now, now, now let, me, let me tell you something. Listen to me. 100% of everything belongs to God. What did I say? 100% everything belongs to God. No, no. Say it again. What did I say? 100% everything belongs to God. Okay. So, if God blesses you with a paycheck of $1,000, how much of that belongs to God? Okay, you're doing good. You're the smart. Now, how much did God say to put aside for his work? 10%. How many is left? 90%. Which one does belong to God? Oh, ah, you're getting smart. Okay. All right. So then why would God, if he owns all 1,000, want you to put aside 10% if all but still belongs to him? Why? Because it's not about the money. It's about your ability to put it aside. Your will, your control, your discipline to put it aside. He's after your discipline. If you can manage the 10% properly, 
then he is happy to trust you with the 90% that's left. But because you've been unfaithful in the 10%, you keep losing the 90%, so you end up with no percent. That's why you're broke. And so you tell God, I can't pay tithes this week. Things tough. We're in crisis right now, God. You got to figure this out. Things too rough. And God is saying, what are you talking about? Let me take you one step further. This is what tithing does to you. Number one, what's the first word? Accountability. Accountability. Write it down. Now, each one of these words is management. If you keep paying your tithes and giving your offering, you automatically first become accountable. What's the second word? Discipline. Discipline. For you to put that aside every single time, it takes control. What's the third word? Honesty. Honesty. For you to be a tither, that means no one's watching except God. And he knows if you're paying it or not. You can lie to everybody else, but God knows if you're paying 10%. That means it makes you honest. And managers must be honest. What's the fourth word? Diligence. Diligence. Diligence means that you work at it constantly to make sure you don't steal that 10%. That's what managers are supposed to do. What's the next word? Oh my God. That's what's wrong with managers. They are unfaithful. And it takes faithfulness to tithe. What's the last one? Trustworthiness. Trustworthiness. For you to manage a tithe, God got to trust you every time. I just gave you the characteristics of a manager. They are accountable. They are honest. They are diligent. They are faithful. They are trustworthy. Jesus, one day, showed top-class management. One day, he had 5,000 people in a field, and they were all hungry, and there was, they say, plus women and children, so they must have had about 12,000, and he is about to, to distribute some resources to them. I want you to watch him at work, okay? Matthew 6, verse 40. It says, So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, that's administration, organization then he took the five loaves and the two fishes that's the resources looking up to the one who owns them he thanked them for letting him use them that's appreciation that means they don't belong to you that's all right. someone else's property he broke it then he gave them to his disciples and they gave it to the people delegation it's management delegation Watch him. He also divided the two fish among them all, and they all ate and were satisfied. That's customer service. <laughs> Give God a hand for good customer service. That's good. That's good. All were satisfied. Now watch his management kick in. It says, and the disciples, he told them to pick up every crumb. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to imagine this. 12,000 people in an open field, breaking bread and pieces of fish. Now, how in the world are you going to find pieces of bread, crumbs, and pieces of fish, bone and stuff in the grass? He says, pick up every crumb. In the book of Matthew, it actually says it. He says, and he said to them, pick up every crumb and bring it to me. I don't want to waste nothing. This country is built on a culture of waste. Yes, yes, yes. And it is in the church. Yes, it is. Yes. Who go direct to the buffets after service? <laughs> you. And what do you do at that buffet? Now you know the plate is too small for what you want to do. You pile it up, sit at the table, and half is left in the plate. You are a bad manager and God takes notes. Cheryl, waste food. <laughs> That ain't funny. He made them pick up the crumbs. It was not the crumbs that were important. It was the lesson he was teaching. You don't waste the crumb. 
When we started our ministry, we had a building a little smaller than this. Man, I would teach as if I were teaching to a million people. We had our one camera set up in the center. And we would clean everything. We had our sets, speakers, everything. I tell them, this is, this is, this is God's property. No paper in the bathroom. I said, and don't call no janitor for nothing. If you find it, fix it. Why? Because God's watching us. And if you can't manage this little building, that ain't ours. He'll never trust us with one of our own. And we began our national television show in that little building. We used to convert the stage into a set for TV. And we took our one camera and we'd move it and shoot it different ways so we can have different cutaways. And we'd work it every inch we used. And our program became the number one program in the country for 10 years. And when folks came to see where we shot it, they went into shock. Did you shoot it here? Yes, sir. <laughs> we thought you had a big studio. No, we don't. We got a big mind. Yeah. Give God a half of management. Yeah. I remember when our prime minister came to be a guest on our show. He had to come to a little shopping center all the police and all the guards and he came walking he says brother miles is this where you i said yes sir this is it this is the studio he said i thought you had a big place i said i got a big mind he said you manage this well and there was the head of my country sitting in that little building on a stage for one hour interviewed by me and that show became the highest viewing show in the country's history from a little place that we managed. Today, we built the largest meeting place in the country. We own it. We have block to block property. The whole block is ours. We own 57 acres on the beach. When you are faithful over another man's property, God will give you property of your own. I want to say to Grace Church, make this as if it's yours. God's watching you. He's watching how you park your cars in the people's parking spaces. He's watching how you handle the bathroom and the tissue on the floor. He, he's watching how the kids write and mark. So he's watching everything. Can they handle the big times God is watching for? Can they handle the big times? It's management. 